Hi, Jason with MaxAmps.com here. Today I'm going to show you a few simple steps on how to use your MaxAmps method balancer. We've had some questions in the past and I figured it'd be just as easy to make a video for you guys, show you how easy it is to use this thing. Now the method balancer is designed to be used with older chargers that do not have a balancer built into them like many of the newer models do today. Uh, basically what I've got here is an EOS 5i AC-DC Hyperion charger. Uh, it does five cells, up to five cells, at five amps. Simple, easy, very effective charger. Here we have our max amps method balancer. When you get this balancer you have the option of ordering it with four different adapter boards. This is the Hyperion board. You can get it with the Thunder Power board, the Kokum board, or the Align board. Basically, with all four boards, you can balance charge any pack out there in the market. Uh, when you receive it, this set of output leads will not have a battery connector on. You need to solder on the battery connector of your choice. In this case, I use Dean's Ultras. The other set of leads, when you get that, go to the charger. When you get this unit, will have alligator clips on. I suggest you remove those and most of your chargers will have four millimeter output jacks on them on the side or on the face like that replace those gator clips with four millimeter bullet plugs now on this unit here just simply pull off the plugs caps I should say plug into your negative plug into your positive take and power up your charger in this case, this charger is DC or AC operated. We're going to plug her into the wall outlet here. Charger powers up. You can see I've already got it set here. We're at 1550 for the capacity, 3 cell for the cell count. Balancer's plugged in. Real simple to do now. All you do is take and connect your main battery connector leads. Push those together. Then take and connect your 3 cell battery tap to the 3 cell port on the board. The charger will quickly light up. It'll flash 3 cells, confirming that you got a 3 cell pack. The light will go on and off with the tone real quick, as you heard. It's ready to go. As you can see, it's already working the pack. Go over to the charger, press and hold enter. Charger checks, balance check batteries checked it's working now this we'll just shut this down here we'll press enter and what I'm going to do is disconnect balance taps the main battery leads quickly what I'll do here is we'll give you a rundown on standalone mode this balancer will work either in connected mode with the chargers I just showed you or in standalone mode now when in standalone mode take the main battery leads or the, I shouldn't say the main battery, the charge leads that go to the charger cap them back off. If you hook the battery up to the balancer and these touch it'll short out, it'll blow the fuse you'll need to replace that fuse which is just a standard 7.5 amp automotive fuse. Okay, you can go back over plug in your main leads plug in your balance taps and I'll show you this real quickly as it kicks in here lights up, cell count, it goes to work. Now, sometimes this happens, if you were to plug the balancer in and you get a steady flashing tone from the status light, that means you have a connection error or you have actually a cell in the pack that is a half a volt or more in difference from the other cells in the pack, meaning say you have one or say you have two cells at three volts and you have a cell that comes in at four volts, the balancer will not let you balance that pack. You need to correct that issue. Easiest way to do that is with a voltmeter. And if you do a lot or anything with electronics in RC, I suggest you pick up a voltmeter. This is a little Craftsman unit that cost about uh, 23, 24 bucks. What you can do, set that to 20 volts. First thing you want to do is check to make sure you're getting juice through the Dean's connector. Touch your positive very carefully without shorting. Touch your negative. Get a voltage read. 11.85 is what we're getting, so we know the connector's working good on this pack. 
sometimes what will happen is when we solder these connectors on flux can actually seep through from the backside and get inside the plug and follow the connection. Uh, you can either scrape it out with a small screwdriver or preferably a wire brush with some rubbing alcohol. Clean those connections really good. Uh, on the other end, your male ones can the, actually get just as dirty. Uh, the flat springs here, the, I shouldn't say the flat springs, but the springs can occasionally go flat and you simply need to re-arc them, re put the bend back into them. That will cause a connection error also. Uh, once you've gotten determined that your connector is fine, what we can do is actually do an individual cell test on the pack. This is a Hyperion balance tap. You'll notice that we've got a red wire and three black wires. Now to do a cell test, individual cell test, you want to touch the red probe to the red wire, the black probe to the first black wire. And as soon as we get connection here, there we go, we got 3.94, that's the reading for cell number one. Now to do cell number two, move each probe over one position. Now that's going to be cell number two at 3.95. Now in the last one, move each one over one, but you'll notice there's a gap in between the two wires here. There is no wire in there. You need to move over to the last one. Once we get uh, contact here, then we show 3.95. What you're looking for is that cell that is more than half a volt difference from the other ones. Once you find that, what you can do then is take and on the back side of the balance tab, push in the lock tab for that wire. You'll see the slot here, simply push down with a pin and pull at the same time. You can remove the two wires for that corresponding cell. Then what you need to do is make a charge lead for your charger with gator clips on versus a battery plug. Once you've got that made, you can clamp onto those two individual wires, set the charger to charge one cell, and I would suggest you do it at like a amp rate to be on the safe side. Make sure nothing touches, you don't want anything shortened out. Charge that cell back up to, watch your charger as you're doing it, charge it back up to the same voltage as the ones that it needs to match with. Once you get to that point, stop the charge, put the wires back in the correct spots on the balance tap, and plug everything back in and balance charge the pack again, and you should be good to go. Now you'll run either, you'll, what will happen is you'll either have a cell that's too high or too low compared to the other two. So you either need to discharge or charge. Now if you need to discharge that cell, you can use like an automotive light bulb. It will take a while because the amp dry isn't high, so what I would suggest you do is take the charger and charge the other cells to match the high cell in that case. Pretty simple to do, just be careful when you do it, watch everything, don't short anything out. If you have any questions or concerns, contact us at our online support chat at maxamps.com or you can email me personally at jason at maxamps.com. I check my emails all day long, about every 10-15 minutes. I usually get back to people right away. So. We're here to help. Hope this helps. Take care.